एवरीवन आई एम मीनाक्षी एंड आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू तथास्तु फ्रॉम टुडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग अ सीरीज व्हिच इज एनवायरनमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी सीरीज वेयर इन वी विल बी कवरिंग इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ एनवायरनमेंट व्हिच इज रेलेवेंट फॉर योर यूपीएससी एग्जामिनेशन एंड स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द बेसिक्स टुडे वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट इकोसिस्टम एंड इट्स वेरियस कंपोनेंट्स सो वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द वेरी बेसिक थिंग ऑफ एनवायरनमेंट ऑफ आवर एनवायरनमेंट सिलेबस व्हिच इज इकोसिस्टम एंड देयर कंपोनेंट्स सो लेट्स बिगिन but before that these are the courses which are offered by tathasu ics for all of you there is mslv which specifically targets your mains examination then we have ncert module you can register for it then pslv which will be launching very soon it specifically targets your prelims examination and then we have philosophy optional and the new batch starts on 15th of september also you can inquire on these phone numbers and visit the main office as well for further inquiries and still if you have any doubt you can visit the thastus website for it now let's begin our lecture which is about ecosystem and its various components so before ecosystem uh, we are talking about environment what is environment if in basic basic language basic sentence we have to uh, we have to uh, phrase in one sentence that what is environment environment in simple words is our surroundings the surroundings in which we live now environment comprises all your biotic which is your living components and your abiotic which is your non living components so if we have to summarize that what is environment so environment is basically our surroundings comprising of biotic and abiotic components now when we come to ecosystem what is ecosystem so ecosystem is this functional unit of nature where these biotic which are our living organisms and uh, these abiotic which are our non living organism they interact with each other among and among themselves as well so if we have to summarize if we have to give the definition if we have to understand what is ecosystem then ecosystem is functional unit of nature where these biotic or in simple terms where these living and non living being, beings interact with each other that is our ecosystem now moving on the organisms now organisms comprises of producers producers means those who can produce their own food then we have consumers those who are dependent on producers or uh, you can say on animals or on plants then we have decomposers decomposers are those who uh, feed on dead plants or dead animals now we have interact with now these organisms when they interact within themselves and with the surrounding physical environment that is the abiotic factor so that Uh, forms our ecosystem now this ecosystem may vary in size and it may encompass specific and limited species how you can see this picture this uh, we'll be learning that these ecosystem are of various types let's uh, understand this for example how it vary in size and limited species for example this is a river uh, this is our aquatic ecosystem right this is land this is our terrestrial ecosystem now they may vary in size the aquatic ecosystem may be big the terrestrial uh, ecosystem may be small but there may be more species in terrestrial ecosystem there may be less species or very limited species in aquatic ecosystem this is how they vary in size and they may encompass specific and limited species i hope this much is clear to all of you now we moving towards this biotic and this biotic and abiotic components are linked together through various nutrient cycles and energy flows see these biotic and abiotic components we all are interlinked we all are all are interdependent on each other these biotic and abiotic components are also linked to these various nutrient cycles because uh, these the producers uh, producers consumers decomposer uh, th these producers they are dependent they can make their own food then the consumers they are dependent on these producers they may eat plants they may eat other animals so this is the nutrient flow how they get their food from different uh, sources and this is uh, there is this energy flow as well uh, through which they are linked with each other now moving towards every component relies on each other uh, 
upon other components yes all the components are interdependent on each other for example in this picture you can see there's a deer now the deer is herbivorous it will eat plant now we have tigers as well that tiger can feed on this deer so the deer is dependent on plants uh, the tiger the carnivores is dependent on deer that's it that is how we are we rely on each other and we are interdependent on each other if we talk about plants how they consume nutrients from soil how the rain helps in growth of plants so we are dependent interdependent among these biotic and abiotic factors alike i hope this much is clear let's move forward when one part of the ecosystem is harmed or vanishes ultimately because we are interdependent if one part vanishes then the other part will be affected automatically suppose the plant disappears right we are cutting trees there's large scale of deforestation no? and there's lot of climate change take place so now suppose the plants disappears in this particular area if we talk about this picture only the, all the plants have disappeared from here what will the deer eat because it is herbivorous the deers will all ultimately if the plant vanishes the deers will also start vanishing or disappearing now the tigers who are dependent on deers they consume the deers as their food this is just a hypothetical situation just an example so if the deer vanishes what will the tiger eat so ultimately the tigers the carnivores will will also start vanishing this is how we are interdependent on each other and how even one part of ecosystem if it is harmed or vanishes or even if it is threatened then how we can see that how it can affect the other part as well i hope this much is clear now let's move forward about the classification of our ecosystem so we have classified it into two parts which is natural that means it occurs in nature and then we have this man made now man made we have this much we have crop plants we have these agricultural fields of so rice wheat and different crops we have gardens we have dams we have reservoirs so this is man made ecosystem if we talk about the natural one now natural one is classified into terrestrial and then it is classified into the aquatic one now if we talk about this terrestrial ecosystem now it comprises of the things which are on land that means our forests are there our grasslands are there our deserts are there so these are different terrestrial ecosystems which thrive on land whereas when we talk about the aquatic ones now we have also different aquatic ecosystem as well we have fresh waters then we have these marine waters we have brackish water in which we have uh, these wetlands we have these mangroves which comprise of this brackish water so mangroves we have different wetlands estuary so these comprise of our brackish which is part of aquatic ecosystem so if we have to classify it classified into two parts terrestrial ecosystem and then we have aquatic ecosystem in terrestrial we can associate it with the all the land ecosystem we have different forest then we have grassland in the zone then we have deserts as well and when we move towards aquatic it is related with the water sources then we have this fresh water ecosystem we have uh, this brackish water ecosystem we have marine water water ecosystem so this is how our ecosystem is classified now moving towards the uh, talking about various components the components of ecosystem are uh, we are talking about it already that it can be divided into two parts which are ab abiotic which comprises of our non living things then we have biotic which comprises of our living components so let's understand what are these abiotic and biotic components first of all let's discuss about the uh, biotic ones which are our non living components so it comprises of limiting factors now let's understand it with an example we have these uh, tropical rain evergreen rainforest right so we must be thinking those these are tropical evergreen and rain forest so how what kind of forest are the, uh, these they have lots of this tree canopies they are very very dense forest the diagram is not very clear they don't look like trees but you can understand it for example that these are our trees so uh, these tropical rainforest we are talking about tropical evergreen 
forests so these have these lots of trees right when you have lots of trees in a particular area the sunlight is very very limited the sunlight is limited now if we talk about rain so because we are talking about rain forest so we assume that there is plenty of rainfall over there and in our minds if we use uh, we can think that if a seed over, is over there if we sow a seed in this forest it will germinate very quickly uh, very quickly very rapidly but the answer is no and the reason is because when there is lot of rain and when we sow a seed this is our soil suppose this is our soil and we have sown a seed in this forest now when there is plenty of rainfall there is too much rainfall when there is too much rainfall the nutrients of the the uh, nutrients which are essential for the growth of this seed the nutrients get it's washed away right they they are leached that is the reason where why the seed will take more uh, the more time to germinate it will not grow very quickly despite having much rainfall so it is harmful right then if we talk about another thing even if the seed germinate so it will not move it will not grow it will not start growing very rapidly reason because the sunlight which is second most important thing for the plant you need water you need essential soil nutrients you need sunlight but the sunlight is also not plentiful the sunlight is also not too much at least that much that is required for the quick growth of this particular seed so these two factors which are important for the growth of a plant they are not available in plenty they are these limiting factors which are stopping or which are in hydrant hydrants in this growth of this plant so these are called limiting factors which limit the growth of a particular thing and they comprise uh, they are part of our world a biotic which are non living components now second we move towards light light is very necessary so even for uh, for plants it is necessary we have seen even for human beings we require a lot of vitamin d vitamin d should be Uh, we, we should take, you know uh, in winters we sit in sunlight we sit uh, to uh, to keep our bodies warm so we require but our, our body requires vitamin d it is essential for us as well as it is essential for plants but if we talk about certain things the spectrum of light then the, this uv rays are harmful for us so the vitamin d is required but the uv rays are harmful for us this is second our uh, uh, biotic uh, biotic component we are talking uh, talking about and how it is important now we can also see that how the human beings the organism the living organism are dependent on the, these a biotic non non uh, living organisms non living things now talking about rainfall yes rainfall is very important for for our agriculture now if the agriculture will uh, agriculture will be good the plants will be good then the producers will consume their own food then consumers can uh, feed on those producers so we can understand like this that if the rainfall is good see you can just understand this ki how we can relate that we are dependent on these abiotic components so if the rain rainfall is plentiful if the rainfall is good then the agriculture will will be good if the agriculture is good then we have plants then who are the producers also the producers will be good they can feed uh, themselves they can produce their own food if they can produce their own go, uh, food if they are thriving well then we have consumers who then thrive on the arrow will be upward who then thrive on this producers so they will be good and then we have decomposers as well so the chain will be the cycle will be all okay if we are if everything is going good then we have temperature we talk about temperature and altitude similarly like when we move towards when we go towards mountain we can see there see there are lots of species who can survive on this plain area there are lots of species who survive in the cold climate only for example we have these snow leopards right so there are lot of species who there there this survival thing very some survive in the plain area well some survive in the mountainous area well so these are all part of our biotic components and if we talk about altitude as soon as we start moving upwards in high altitude 
constitutes the species diversities the diversity of the species starts declining it comes slow so uh, if we move towards these mountainous areas these high altitude areas so we will see the species diversity is low over there then we have soil it is our edific factor it is part of our edific factor and soil i guess we have understood that how it is important for the growth of plants how the essential soil nutrients are uh, if the rain even if the rainfall is good how the essential soil nutrients are uh, useful or are essential for the growth of a plant so these are our abiotic components now moving towards the biotic components which are our living uh, if we uh, have uh, categorized as, as non living and then living now they first it comprises of the primary producer so producers we have been using this terms producer or autotroph so these are our producers or autotroph so plants um, can make their own food so they come under this category of producers then we have consumers who are dependent on others or we have heterotrophs or phagotrophs so these are part of our biotic components living beings so these are our consumers even human beings right and when we move towards decomposers decomposers are those who feed on dead plants and dead animals so these are our decomposers so this was about biotic components so that was all about the ecosystem and components and i guess it was easy as well as helpful for, for all of you and if you found it interesting please like the video and subscribe to our channel thank you